The power conferences are not the only ones adding high-level transfers this offseason. Who are the best of the rest transferring to mid-major schools? You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, folks? Happy Monday, and welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, a daily national college hoop show, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your co-hosts. I'm Andy Patton. He is Isaac Shade over there. You are listening to us at The Place to get your college basketball content five days a week, 52 weeks out of the year. We are here with you all summer long, in season, out of season, doesn't matter. Locked on College Basketball rolls on five days a week. You can listen to this show ad-free on Amazon Music as a reminder. Also, a special shout out to those of you who are everyday listeners who are making this show your first listen or your first watch of the day. And a reminder, if you want to hang out with us more, you can join us on our Discord channel. It's free to join. Link in the show notes on audio and video platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Folks, make every moment more. It's the dog days of summer. The sports are not sporting like we want them to, but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's someone for everyone, every day, all summer long. So visit FanDuel.com to get started. Well, Isaac, this is the final episode of a six-part series Took place last week where we did every Power 5 conference talking about the best transfers coming into the conference, talking about the best overall transfer portal classes in the conference, and then dishing out some superlatives, best NBA draft prospect, best sophomore breakout, et cetera, et cetera. We did it for each of the Power 5 conferences last week. This week, we're closing it out with the best of the rest, trying to evaluate 200 transfer portal classes is an insane, <laughs> insane undertaking. Uh, we had a lot of fun bantering back and forth, trying to figure out which teams, which programs, which players we wanted to kind of make sure we got into this conversation. But folks, we're missing a ton. There are players that you're going to hope to hear about that we may not get to on today's episode. If that's the case, let us know in the comments, players, you're excited to see this upcoming season at mid-major schools. We're very excited to see the list and get an, uh, kind of an idea of who people are excited about this upcoming season. But Isaac, we whittled it down from, I assume, 800 or so different transfers in the mid-major ranks. We whittled it down to five. And I want you to start and let us know who we put here at the very top of our mid-major transfer portal rankings. It's the guy we all wanted to see in the NCAA tournament, but we didn't get to last year. Rex Specs himself, Mr. Robbie Avila, going from Indiana State to St. Louis with his head coach, Josh Schertz. And Andy, this dude, look, he busted onto the scene last year, but he had a productive freshman year at, at Indiana State as well. But last year, 17 points a game, 6.6 boards, 4.1 assists. I don't think people maybe realize yeah how good he is there. And he's a great outside shooter, just shy of 40% on 4.2 attempts per game as a 6'2 center. And Andy, let's keep in mind that Coach Schertz, barring him popping off for the NBA, which I don't think he'll do, has two more years of eligibility with the Billikens for Mr. Robbie Avila. Dude, I love Rex Specs. Bring it on. Yeah, we... we... Avila was the first player that we highlighted of like, okay, we're, he's for sure going to be in the top five. We know that unquestionably, but we had a lot of banter back and forth picking between him and who we ultimately ended up going with second on the list in Tyrese Hunter transferring from Texas to Memphis, joining Penny Hardaway's team. And we had a lot of kind of discussion on how we wanted to go here is comparing a, a center who's transferring from a mid-major to another mid-major, uh, comparing that to a point guard who is or a guard who's transferring from a super high major program in Texas to uh, a, a very productive program in Memphis was, was tough. It's hard to compare those two players. And Hunter's a guy who's been double figures all three years in college basketball, started Iowa State, spent the last two years at Texas. We've seen some consistency issues with him a little bit. Uh, he's not much of a, a facilitator. He's, he's not really a, a pure point guard in that regard. But I think there's little doubt that he will be productive at Memphis. I think that system works well for him. I think Penny's going to let him loose and let him do a lot of really good things with the basketball. So uh, I, I, I think Avila was the right choice at number one. I think he's the most exciting and, and one of the most intriguing transfers to watch next year, getting the opportunity to play for his same coach in a similar system should really help him 
thrive right away. But uh, Tyrese Hunter is going to be a, a really good player next year, as he has been for the last three years in college basketball. Yeah, I mean, some of it is I, I appreciate just kind of we know what his floor is, right? We're always mm-hmm. going to get about 33, 34 percent, 10, 11, maybe 12 points a game. Mm-hmm. And the facilitation can be there higher. I mean, there's last year 4.1 point or 4.1 assists a game. His freshman year at Iowa State was just shy of five assists a game. Mm-hmm. So I think Andy, that's an area we could see an yeah. uptick potentially. But man, just brings all this wealth of experience with him to Memphis, and I'm excited about that. Andy, uh, a guy that you know well and have talked mm-hmm. a lot about this offseason is somebody that played a couple years not at the Division One level, but last year went to Pepperdine for his first time in Division One. is Mr. Michael Ajayi, who now heads to Spokane and the, <laughs> and the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Excuse me. And so, Andy, tell us what you've been learning about Ajayi this offseason. Yeah, led led the WCC in scoring in his first year at Division One basketball, and led. The, I mean, again, leading any conference in scoring in your first year in D one is impressive. But the WCC had a lot of extremely talented players last year to get that opportunity to do that over, you know, your Aiden Mahaney's and your Augustus Marcellonis and Graham Ek and, and Ryan Emhart and etc. Uh, is, is a really strong testament to his ability to put the ball in the hoop. Uh, his efficient, he was an efficient scorer in two pointers. He was an efficient three point shooter, not a high volume shooter, but right. efficient in that regard. Six foot seven going to kind of be the Anton Watson replacement in terms of like his spot in the lineup. Now he's not as good of a defender as Anton Watson, but he is a a more versatile scorer and it'll be very exciting to see how Gonzaga deploys him. I think he's going to play some three. He's also going to play some small ball four, uh, especially with Caleb battle in the mix. We, we, as you've, for those of you who listened to the shows last week, you know, we don't put two players from the same program in the top five. So that's why you're not going to see Dane Danger, who also transferred to Memphis. That's why you're not going to see Caleb Battle, uh, who also transferred to Gonzaga, although both those players are have strong uh, arguments to be in this conversation. But uh, Ajayi, to me, he averaged 17 and 10 in his first year in the WCC. Gonzaga snapped him up real quick in the transfer portal. He's very strongly considered staying in the NBA draft process, ultimately decided on the last day that he's going to come to Gonzaga. I think that's a smart choice for him. He's going to be in a more NBA style offense with the Zags next year. I think he's really going to pop off and uh, on a team that already has great, great players in Nemhard and EK and Ben Gregg and, and now battle. Uh, I think you're going to see Michael Ajayi be, be one of their more productive players in, in the conference and, and frankly in the country. How many six, seven dudes around the country you think had 9.9 boards a game last year? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, just- he's a great positional rebounder. Yeah. Really good stuff there. All right. Number four on our list of our All best of the rest transfer team is Jamal Mashburn Jr. Going from New Mexico to Temple. Played, remember, his first year at Minnesota. We had a good, productive freshman year, but man, he has gone nuts the last couple, in particular, his sophomore and junior years at New Mexico. Last year, a little bit of a downturn from that 18, 19 points a game. But Andy, why is that the case? Yeah, he had some injury issues last year. I think New Mexico also played a lot through Jalen House, and they played a lot through JT Toppin, who, of course, transferred to Texas Tech. Uh, and so Mash's role just changed a little bit. Uh, he's a guy who's who's played for Patino, Patino at every single stop for Richard Patino uh, in his career. And, and so when he hit the transfer portal, there was a lot of questions of where he was going to go. At the time, Richard Patino was a potential candidate to take another job. So people were like, is, is MASH going to follow him? What's going to happen there? Kentucky was interested in MASH. There were some other high-profile programs. And then he goes to Temple, and it was kind of an odd pick. Like a lot of people were surprised nice, yeah. to see him end up with the Owls, but Temple's a historically great program, hasn't been great lately. I believe there's a familial connection with Mashburn and Temple. I don't know the exact storyline there, but he gets an opportunity now to, to once again have the ball in his hands a bunch. If he's healthy, he could be a 20-point-per-game scorer next year at Temple pretty easily. I think that's very much within the realm. I mean, we've seen him do it in, in a historically defensive-focused conference in the Mountain West. So for him to be able to, to drop close to 20 a game in that conference, I think it bodes well for what he's able to bring to Temple. Yeah, and we talk about um, Tyrese Hunter not being much of a facilitator. Mashburn mm-hmm. even less so. He's yeah. never averaged more than 2.1 assists in his career. All right, Andy, the fifth player on our all-transfer best of the rest team is Jacoby Coles. Started his career at Butler last three years at TCU, where last year, for the first time in his career, averaged double digits, 10 points a game, 3.8 boards, 1.3 assists. Um, another efficient but low-volume three-point shooter Coles is, but he's a six-seven forward, and there's a lot of different things he brings to the table. And so we're really intrigued to see exactly what he'll do 
at Grand Canyon. And, and part of that is, you know, when you get to go be there with a player like Town Grant Foster, man, mm-hmm. the, the sky's kind of the limit. So uh, I know that we are both excited for that. Andy, anything else on this first team before we keep on trucking? Yeah, I'm excited to see the the two man game between Coles and Tyon Grant F- Foster again. Uh, they're not in the, the WCC yet. They're in the WAC next year. WAC's not as good as the WCC, not as deep. I think Jacoby Coles could go off. And there's a handful of players that we didn't touch on. We're going to touch about talk, talk about all of them uh, later in the show. But uh, Isaac and I, we talked about agonizing over one and two. We spent a lot of time trying to figure out who was going to get that fifth spot, uh, and we ultimately settled on Coles. I think it was the right choice. But there's a lot of other players that could have been in that conversation. That's absolutely correct, Andy. Because there are 200 plus programs to choose from when we're making a list like this. So who did we decide were the five best non-power conference transfer classes in those other 26 leagues? We'll get to that in just a second. Right after I tell you about FanDuel. Folks, you know that Andy and I both love sports. We know that you love sports or else you wouldn't be here in early August right when basketball isn't happening yet, but you are here in these dog days of summer, even though we get fewer games, sports aren't sportsing like we want them to, but FanDuel lets you keep the sports going whenever you want. All you got to do is open the app, dream up bets anytime you're in the mood. And great news this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. How about some national championship odds for non-Power 5 conferences? And as you would imagine, it starts with Gonzaga at plus 2,000, but after there, it falls off the cliff. Andy Patton, Memphis comes second at plus 8,000. St. Mary's plus 10,000. San Diego State, the Aztecs are plus 12,000. If you think there's any more magic uh, there, maybe you want to get in on that. And then Dayton and Boise State both come in at plus 15,000. If you want any of those odds or maybe some others, head on over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you all so much for joining us today on Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Um, A a lot of these um, mid-major schools don't have their individual shows but I'm hanging out today with uh, a, a man who does, and that's Mr. Andy Patton, the host of Locked On Zags. Is that the only one, Andy? It is the only one. <laughs> okay, so Andy speaking on behalf of the entirety of the 25 other conferences in our great <laughs> sport. Uh, so, Andy, what we did is we boiled down the transfer classes of all 25 of these conferences into the top five with a couple honorable mentions to boot. Who leads the way? Yeah, I think... We didn't do this intentionally, but it makes sense that since we led with Avila and St. Louis, as opposed to leading with Tyrese Hunter and Memphis, that here, uh, when we're talking overall transfer portal classes, we lead with Penny Hardaway and the Tigers. This is just a a combination of being a deep class as well as having high-level talent. Uh, A lot of conversation about some of the players Penny lost and, and, you know, David Jones staying in the draft and his son transferring, which I know (laughs) is that made some headlines. But uh, ultimately, just boiling down this class, I mean, Tyrese Hunter's fantastic. We talked about him a lot, so we don't need to get into that anymore. But you'll get Tyreek Smith from SMU, very, very talented player there. You get Dane Danger from yeah. Illinois. That's a huge addition for them. Top 50 transfer, according to most places that rank out all the transfers. Uh, started his career at Baylor, very good at Illinois, six foot nine, big. Uh, does a lot of things really well. You get Musa Cisse for uh, coming back, stops at OK State, was also at Ole Miss. Uh, you got a couple other mid-major guys coming to this level who, who are going to be productive as well. I really like this class. Um, I'm not as much like I think there's some people out there who are just really down on Penny and I get that. I'm not n- as negative on him as others are, but I am curious how all the pieces are going to fit together here again. Teams that have a lot of transfers coming in who are all expected to play big roles like that can be challenging and and you need the right coach to put those pieces together. We talked about it with like Mike Woodson at Indiana. We talked about it a little bit with like Dennis Gates at Missouri. Like you need to be able to to make the pieces work and We'll see if Penny can. I think some of these guys can really, really thrive in his system, but does it do all the pieces fit together in a way that works? That's kind of the big question mark, but it, it, there's no denying the talent here that's that's joining this program. Yeah, P.J. Haggerty is a name that I'm really interested to watch, Andy, with this. Coming over from Tulsa, we'll see how he does, but just kind of an under-the-radar part of this transfer class. Mm-hmm. Andy, number two on our list, I think – 
we all thought that perhaps Will Wade with one year of contrition down at the mm -hmm. non-power five level mm -hmm. might find his way back immediately. He doesn't. So he comes back to McNeese State and he just loads up again through the transfer portal mm -hmm. and uh, going to be a lot of fun there. He McNeese is our number two class on this list. Brandon Murray from Ole Miss. Kadir Copeland coming over from Syracuse who does a little bit of everything, but most uh, well-known for just being a really good defender. Mm -hmm. Sincere Parker from St. Louis is a guy – uh, that, that we just don't have much of a sample size on Andy, but we, mm -hmm. we think if he can stay healthy, there's a lot of possibility there mm -hmm. and, and several other players. But, um, man, we, we expect Will Wade and McNeese to have another good year, and a lot of it is due to this transfer portal class. Yeah, absolutely. I think winning 30 games, dominating the Southland Conference, <laughs> and then going out and adding a trio of high major transfer steer program, adding a, a quality addition in Sincere Parker. Uh, Jerome Brewer Jr. was very good last year in the Southland. He averaged about 14 points, five boards uh, yeah. for Texas A&M Commerce. So when you can get one of the better players in your own conference to come join your team, that's always a big win as well. Uh, hard to not be very excited about the direction that Will Wade has this program going uh, as long as he stays at that program, which we'll see if they win another 30 games next year, there's a good chance that somebody's going to try to pluck him from that program. Uh, number three on the list is Gonzaga. We've got to have Gonzaga on here. Um, it's definitely a quality over quantity class. And for me, as somebody who covers Gonzaga, the the thing I love about this class is not only uh, the talent, but the way that they fit together. Mark Few is, is, a, is a wizard at putting together roster construction. For, like He's very, very good at that. Rarely do players leave the program because they were unhappy with playing time. Like He's, good, he's really good at kind of fitting all the pieces together. And for this team, they only lose Anton Watson, but Mike Lajayi comes in to replace him. They had a guard depth issue last year, and they didn't have like a scoring guard coming off the bench. So they go out and get a guy in Caliph Battle who uh, over the last seven games of his career at Arkansas averaged 29 and a half points a game. Uh, you go get Braden Smith from Colgate, uh, who's going to redshirt this year. So he's not going to be impactful for Gonzaga on the floor this year, but he's going to push players in practice. He's going to get better from learning from Ryan Nemhard, from Nolan Hickman. Those guys both graduate after this year. In that case, Smith, who was the Patriot League player of the year at Colgate, steps into a starting role right away. You get a role player in Emmanuel Inocente coming over from Tarleton State, who averaged six and a half points, six and a half boards, and like three and a half assists as a true freshman uh, for that, uh, a very good Tarleton State team. So again, quality here, not quantity, but Gonzaga had a lot of returners, and I think fit these pieces really seamlessly into what I expect to be a really good roster this upcoming season. Yep, Andy, and, and I love it when teams are able, kind of similar to what I've always liked uh, with teams that are really good coming back and add mm -hmm. one or two pieces with mm -hmm. freshmen that are mm -hmm. going to support things. That's what I love about this Gonzaga class. It's the yeah. same thing. There's there's such great experience and talent coming back, and mm -hmm. then you just sprinkle in an Ajayi in a battle. Right. Yeah. And and so I, I love this because you've already got the the community builders, the culture builders, and then just help bring these guys along and battle in a giant in, in a chanting. And so um, mm -hmm. should be a really, really good year. I, I personally think that Gonzaga is uh, pretty criminally underrated. I don't want to mm -hmm. make you have to be the one to say that. So I'm going to. <laughs> and so really excited to see what happens this year for Coach Few coming off his Olympics um, mm -hmm. experience. And so that'll be really cool. Number four on our list is St. Louis. And Andy, obviously we had Robbie Avila at the top of our list of individual players. And I think it's not just about him because there's some other great players on this list, but Robbie Avila individually really helps elevate what we believe about this St. Louis class. But let's not miss Kobe Johnson coming over from West Virginia. Isaiah Swope, Avila's teammate, coming from Indiana State with Coach Schertz. Um, mm -hmm. Josiah Dotzler um, coming from Creighton and A.J. Casey from Miami. Yeah, great class. Uh, Swope is probably the – I was going to say second, but I think behind Ryan Conwell, he's probably the third best player at Indiana State. Uh, so you get – two of the three best players from your old program joining you in the A-10 at St. Louis, and you get a trio of high major guys. Uh, this, this is a great class. Uh, I, I'm very excited to see what Shirts can do. He was a, a coach rumored in a lot of the coaching carousel moves this offseason. Some people were kind of surprised that he only went to St. Louis, although I think that St. Louis is a quality program and a very quality basketball league, so there's no shame in, in taking that job. And I think he, if he does well there, he may end up getting a bump somewhere else in the not-too-distant future. But uh, the the Isaac, as as you'd expect, 
when you're talking, trying to rank 200 teams and squeeze them into a top five, we really struggled to figure out who we wanted to do with our fifth and final spot here to the point where we wrote three teams down. Um, we ultimately settled on Florida Atlantic. So I want to make sure we're going to talk about all three teams briefly, but I want to make sure we say that this is the team we're going with is the Owls of FAU. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's easy to focus on who they lost, John L. Davis and Vlad Golden and Elijah Martin um, and Nick, uh, Nick Boyd goes to San Diego State. But this team brought in a lot of really talented players. Leland Walker was a most uh, double digit score at Eastern Kentucky. Kai Kai Tandy was really productive last year at Jacksonville State. Uh, the big winner is Baba Miller coming from Florida State, a guy that people have been expecting to be a first round pick for like three years now. And he was never super productive at FS FSU, but perhaps no. a different system in a different league will maybe unlock some of uh, some of the skills that are there. Uh, and then they get Nico Moretti from Illinois as well. A couple other pieces, but hard to not be excited about this class uh, for FAU in the, in the American Conference. And, and I think they, they deserve to be in this fifth spot, but just ahead of two other programs. Yeah. Yeah, Andy, it's funny. The year after they were able to keep everyone together, mm -hmm. they lost everyone and their coach. So these yeah. other two programs, this is another uh, quality over quantity situation in both instances. It's Dayton and Grand Canyon. Um, mm -hmm. Dayton, you know, who, who's losing a phenomenal player in Daron Holmes needed to do some good work and they did getting Posh Alexander to come over from Butler Zed Key an undersized five from Ohio State but a bit of a letdown this year after a great year two seasons ago and then Jacob Connor joining as well from Marshall and then with Grand Canyon um, Jacoby Coles who we've already talked about who we love how he can play alongside town Grant Foster Dennis Evans from Louisville Anybody that can get out of Louisville after last year, you know, they're going to mm -hmm. want to, we hope and expect Louisville to be better mm -hmm. now. And then Andy, uh, Makai Williams coming over from UT Arlington. Uh, he's staying in conference, but is the reigning whack freshman of the year. So three really nice pieces here. Yeah. I, I would just, before we move on, just, the WAC freshman of the year the previous year was Kendall Weaver, who then transferred to Texas and was a very nice piece coming off the bench for Rodney Terry's team. So right. two times in a row, UT Arlington gets the WAC freshman of the year. Two times in a row, that player transfers. It's just that's just a bummer. Part of part of being a mid-major program is just unfortunate seeing that. I'm sure Arlington wanted to keep Weaver, but we're like, well, we get why you're going to Texas. And then now watching Williams uh, have similar production and then leave and stay in conference. That's it, it stinks. That's I feel for the fans in Arlington. That's a bummer. But yeah, he's going to be a great piece for Grand Canyon. And folks, we want to do now to close out the show and to finalize our transfer portal week plus uh, of conversations here is talk about which mid-major edition is the most likely to get drafted. Who's going in that draft in 2025? Who has the potential to be a sophomore breakout? That and more coming up in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, eBay Motors. Folks, passion, drive, patience. That's the formula for winning championships, and it's also what helps keep your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits to LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. And with over 122 million parts to choose from for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. Plus, with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your car every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home that W. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, and eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, Isaac, superlative time here as we talk about our best fit, our best down transfer. We've been doing up transfers uh, in the last five shows, but of course we're talking down transfers today. Uh, most likely draft pick, sophomore breakout. That maybe mentions a few other players as well. We start with the best fit, and we just narrowly kept Dayton out of our top five uh, trans or teams, programs, uh, in terms of transfer portal class, we barely kept Posh Alexander out of our top five players who are transferring into the or into the mid-major level. So 
we feel like it's appropriate to make sure we do give Posh Alexander some time here transferring from Butler to Dayton. And frankly, we're including both Posh and Zed Key kind of as, as a combo best fit. Uh, it's a, a front court, back court duo. Posh Alexander is one of the most highly regarded mid-major transfers in all of college basketball. Uh, he very productive player. The outside shooting is a bit of a question for him, but uh, Dayton gets a really good guard here. They get uh, not not a full replacement for Duran Holmes. I don't think there's anybody out there who's going to be that uh, for this Dayton program. But Zed Key is a player who wasn't great last year, but I think is a nice fit for this team and, and could have a really solid season alongside Alexander for this Dayton program. Indeed. Andy, let's go to the best down transfer. And we start with Kadir Copeland, who's going from Syracuse to McNeese. We talked about him as we were looking at um, at, at the class mm -hmm. coming in there. But um, man, at, at Syracuse, he's done some stuff. He almost got up to 10 points a game last year, 9.6, 4.6 boards, 2.8 assists, 1.5 steals. Um, shot no, he's not good from three. That's part of the issue, um, mm -hmm. but has just kind of an all around game. He's somebody that's going to get into you and defend a good bit. And I think uh, going down to McNeese with coach Wade will be very good for him. Um, and then another of our down transfers, our honorable mention, which um, as a reminder, let me say that, that we're not including people we've already talked about like mm -hmm. Posh Alexander, Jacoby Coles, Tyrese Hunter, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and so our honorable mention here is Damari Monsanto, who comes from Wake Forest to UT San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, Andy, this is a dude that can absolutely light it up from outside. Um, this will be Andy uh, Monsanto's sixth year in college. He spent his first year at, or first two years, excuse me, at ETSU in Johnson City, Tennessee, where I went to college, but at an NAI school. Last mm -hmm. three years, he's been at Wake Forest, but in and out with injuries. Only played 11 games last year, but um, is able to, to, as we said, light it up. Two years ago, averaged 13.3 points for Wake Forest, 6'6", six, six, kind of can play three or four. And so really interested to see what he can do there uh, as we remember the Alamo. The most likely draft pick is the next category here. And I think this is kind of a fun one because you can. we're going to toss out a name that's been on the draft radar, but you can toss out a lot of different names here because – at this time last year, I don't think Adama Ball was being considered anywhere close to a draft pick, and yet he was in that draft conversation throughout the season. Two years ago, Brandon Pajemski, similar situation. He, nobody had him on the radar after he transferred from Illinois to Santa Clara, and now he's not only a very good NBA player, he was with the Olympic team. Like He is a fantastic, fantastic player at that level. So uh, we're, we're starting with Baba Miller, though, who is, is the most likely – or the most talked about draft candidate among kind of the, this group of transfers here, a guy who was highly regarded when he first committed to Florida State, who was expected to be a potential one and done guy. Ultimately, he's never really put together enough of a performance for the, the Knowles to really get into that draft conversation, despite very obvious tools, his length, his wingspan, his athleticism, the defense. It feels like there's an NBA player still in there and perhaps a, a change to a new system where maybe he gets more unlocked offensively with the Owls at Florida Atlantic. I think there's a lot of uh, reason to be optimistic that a change of scenery could lead to him unlocking some of the stuff that we haven't seen from him at the college level that could lead to him being in that draft conversation. And our honorable mention here, Paulus Moraskis transferring from Arizona to St. Mary's, uh, partly because last year a transfer from Arizona to a WCC school was a oft-talked-about draft candidate in Adama Ball, uh, and so why not toss Morauskas in there as well? He has been playing with Lith he was playing with Lithuania before they didn't qualify for the Olympics. Uh, this dude is insanely good. His performances overseas have really, really showcased how good he is. Never found the playing time at Arizona. We'll see what St. Mary's is a unique system, so you're not, he's not going to go out and average 18 points a game because you just don't do that at St. Mary's, but they uh, they lose Joshua Jefferson in the transfer portal, replacing him with a six foot eight high-level wing scorer and defender, and Morauskas I think is going to work great for Randy Bennett, and if he plays well, I wouldn't be surprised if he's in that draft conversation. Andy, we wrap up with our sophomore breakouts, and it's two guys, neither of whom had much of any production last mm -hmm. year. We start with Jan Vita, who was at UCLA last year. He's a Slovenian 6'6 guard transferring this year to LMU. Mm -hmm. And so with both, you know, he only played 7.3 minutes a game last year, just shy mm -hmm. of two points a game. 
but he's somebody that is just based on projection of, mm -hmm. of what we're hopeful for and what we see in his game. Um, somebody, you know, I remember this time last off season, we we're talking about basically this whole UCLA roster mm -hmm. and not knowing what all these international guys were going to do. And I, I think it's just a little tantalizing to think about mm -hmm. the possibilities with V-Day's game. Now, uh, in a similar way, we talked Robbie Avila off the top. We get to kind of end our show with Dennis Evans, another Rex Spexer. That's why I compare those guys <laughs> together who played his freshman year at Louisville last year. He's a 7-1 center, was uh, highly regarded in, in the 2023 class, but mm -hmm. another guy that played under – you know, single digit minutes a game last year, 9.1, average 1.6 points a game. But Andy, we, he's somebody else that we just see some possibilities for as he trans transfers to Grand Canyon, you know, and, and everything that program has going, there's a lot of possibility. Again, as you think about somebody playing with Tyon Grant Foster and how that opens up opportunities for everybody else. Yeah, very excited to see what Evans does at Grand Canyon. A, a couple names quickly. Uh, Caden Cooper transferring from Oklahoma to Louisiana Tech. Uh, another top 100 prospect in the 2023 class who didn't get a lot of playing time with the Sooners. Curious uh, to see if he potentially gets unlocked with La Tech. Uh, and a few names we just didn't find a spot to mention very much in the show. We didn't really talk a ton about Caleb Battle. He could have been in the down transfer category, but it just felt wrong saying a player who was at a very bad Arkansas team last year transferring to a Sweet 16 team is a down transfer. So we just didn't really count him there. Uh, Rowan Brumbaugh from Georgetown to Tulane, excited about what he brings there. Productive last year for the Hoyas. Katie Johnson, we weren't sure where to fit him in here, but I'm excited to see what he can do after uh, a very polarizing career at Auburn, what he <laughs> brings to George Mason. And then Jack Clark going from Clemson to VCU. Uh, VCU's had a lot of success with transfers uh, in the past, and I'm curious to see what they can do here with Clark coming over from the Tigers. Hard to believe it, Andy, but that wraps up our six show mini series, limited series. What should we call it? I think that's <laughs> if the, you call it a limited series, you're more likely to get Emmys. So I think we go with that's that. That's right. What a great limited series, Andy. Uh, honestly, this was a super fun exercise going through the five power conferences and then a best of the rest. This needs to become a staple of every offseason for us folks if you enjoyed this and you are not subscribed to the show we would encourage you to do so very easy on both audio and video if you haven't become part of our locked on college basketball discord why wait it's free to do there's a link in the show notes just click on it and find your way in if you want to talk more college basketball with us and the great rest of that locked on college basketball discord community we'll be back with you tomorrow but in the meantime we want to say apologies to the lawyer family Let's go Wildcats. I'm sure there's about 82 of them in the best of the rest. And until tomorrow, peace.